And we're we on one third of the way here in the LPL. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Day two, week number four. We start off with DMO and Sooning, and a very special occasion here. So I may as well introduce Brento Raz Muhammad, who's with me today. And uh, Raz, we're taking a closer look at Sooning today. Hell yeah! If any LPL viewers, fans out there, have watched last year's gameplay, every team had their own day, had their own week allotted to them. It was a lot of celebration for the fans, basically an outreach from the organizations to the fans so they would have great time out. You know, you get to meet some of the players as well. And then for this one, 100%, you get to see, and I love Sooning Day, because you get to see the mascot just run around and start like, giving people high fives. But we got to introduce Dominus, Chang Hong, Xiao Pong, Pyla, Gala, and of course their support, Mark. Going up against Sooning today, of course. So we're getting early introductions here in the Hong Chao Arena. Uh, before we get towards Sooning, so Dominus get their time in the sun as well. Yeah, and this team has been struggling just a bit. We'll have a discussion about them as we move on, but they've had a really tough schedule coming into this one. And so for me, players like Xiao Peng, the star jungler, you know, really hadn't had that time to showcase his performance, you know, skill expression. So I think we'll see something crazy as he's going up against Weiwei. Just a bit of a, you know, spoiler alert. Yeah, we'll see so. Sooning's roster right now. It's a special day, special day for this roster ride here. Let's start in the top lane. Biu Biu up there, Wei Wei in the jungle, Maple mid, SMLZ Sword Art in the bottom lane with, of course, Fluid Win accompanying them. There we go. And then I already see him. Already on stage. Bring him over. That's Wei Wei, of course, alongside Biu Biu, the top laner. Now, of course, coming in as uh, rookies, both of them. It's really exciting to be able to see their performance kind of come out. I think Wei Wei has been an exciting jungler to watch. His Olaf is fantastic. Uh, his Kha'Zix as well, Spring Splits. I want to see what he can do coming into the split. In the mainstay here for Sooning. Exciting to see brand new jungler, but we have a big focus here as SMLZ and Sword Art join us on the stage, but we're specifically looking at SMLZ because he's celebrating a special anniversary. Yes, yeah, seven years in the scene as a professional player. So you got to give that love over there to SMLZ. I know it's been tough for him last split individually, but him being able to climb out of that one, I feel like he may not look, he's never going to look happy, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's like giving that 70-year-old their cake, singing them happy birthday. They just stand there and They're go, doing well. this purposely. Yeah. They're literally doing, I know, understandably, this is an amazing day for him, but they're trying to bait him. That's the whole goal, ultimately, when you see the hosts, the Chinese audience, they just want to see him smile and laugh. He's done it when he's alongside PYL, a close friend of his. Yes. Uh, but he doesn't want to show that up to the audience, so let's see if they can get something out of there. Uh, wishing him happy birthday, or rather competitive birthday. Seven long years and many, many teams to accompany him. A lot of accomplishments along the way. And I'm sure they're going to be throwing in an interview. Let's see if we can get any reactions off of that one. But just to talk about SMLZ a little bit more. This has been a great split for him thus far. Uh, you know, four games played, four series that is. Three wins for the squad. And a lot of it just based off of his individual performance. So you can't eat the cake right now, hand it over so you can uh, start playing your game. I don't know where he's going to put it if he puts it on his desk. But uh, SMLZ going to go on back and uh, we're going to start off our day, right? So fun little ceremony there for Sooning and I guess Dominus as well. But welcome back to the LPL English. Bit of stability here for you. My name is Sheikh Asterix Ossipenko, joined by Brento Raz Muhammad as always. And uh, I guess welcome back is in order as we've got a taste of today's matchup already. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sad I didn't get to see the Sooning mascot. That's what I came here for. That was my whole purpose in life for today. Why am I even here? I said we saw him in the rehearsal. I don't understand why he wasn't on stage. Well, well we're gonna find him. Maybe we point. see him a little bit later. He'll be waddling around when we're supposed to announce rosters. But that's okay because we get a closer look at today, first of all, and the LPL so far. Because Raz, it's already week four, and things are shaking up in the standings for LPL. Yeah, let's take a look at it because immediately I'd already alluded to Suning's current success, but they're not alone. LNG has been undefeated at this point, yep. and I remember last split. There was one final team that was undefeated. It was between FPX and Suning. Went to week four before we had that huge break. And it was FPX that stood on top. Right now, they're still standing there. But we'll find a way at the end of the week, going up against RNG. Top Esports and LNG are still in the area too. So it feels like the top heavy nature of it, of lap split, is no longer there. It seems like there's a lot more competition at the top now. Not a one-off. That's what I take from FBX. And today, they get tested once again against LGD. But first of all, the DMO and Sooning matchup is what we saw on stage. And I'm really interested in Dominus. We'll have that discussion going further into uh, the current block. But 
Dominus is a team that needs to showcase at least some strength. Yep. They've been losing series after series, only able to pick up one game versus Invictus Gaming, so at least that's something they can go back and say, hey, like we can review that series and be quite happy about it. But not being able to pick up a series this stage, week four, is unfortunate. For a playoff team in spring, so everything's changed coming into summer. And while some things change, just stay the same with FPX, which is where I'm about to allude to, Raz, because we're going to talk about Match of the Week before we it. get into today. Boom. FPX will be tested again, but this time against RNG. Both undefeated teams, and we finally get to see the clash happen. Doombi and Xiaohu is going to be fun just because Xiaohu is playing up far. Remember, whenever the discussion about Xiaohu, it comes down to the fact that he plays up, that he feels like a superhero during playoff yes. time. But right now, seems like he's already there. He started that gear early. So go see him going up against Doombi with the junglers alongside them, by the way. It's going to be a great series for 2v2, seeing that Karsa is going to be there with Xiaohu. Doombi is going to be there with Tien. It's going to be a stellar matchup. Second matchup here for FBX in this week. This is happening Sunday, our second series to finish off that week. As yeah, well. and remember, this is going to be a blockbuster weekend. Not only that, but the day before that, yeah. Invictus Gaming going up against Top Esports. So we have a hell of a lot of great series here this week We're, so you can follow. We really do, but we've got to start with Dominus and Sooning, which is a great series on its own about the development of Dominus coming into summer, but also Sooning's bounce back off what spring was a disappointment. So let's talk about it, because you're right about the disappointing split that they've had. They lost Long Xing as well, and that was even hurtful. Everyone looking at that split saying, you didn't even make playoffs, dog. Yeah. And you lost your franchise player? Uh, of course, went over to RNG, but a lot of that can be a blessing in disguise. That now you can just have a primary focus. There aren't multiple calls, and you're having superstar players in both uh, top side and bot side. Now they are just a bottom side focused team. Yes. And they have been performing individually. I'm going to go towards SMLZ. Easiest person hit. Not only is he celebrating the, you know, his career mi uh, milestone, but coming in, Damage percentage right now, 34%. A lot of it goes to the fact that he's still going to be playing uh, hyper carries in both Zaya and Kai'Sa. But on top of that, he's always been flexible towards mages. In fact, if you remember his career in Rogue Warriors, uh, he was able to showcase he was the first one to go to mages. Yeah. Karthus was a big one. Heimerdinger is a pick. And now it's this split coming on towards Sona. Remember, spring split, not a single Sona Tariq lane. While Korea was pitting up single uh, Sona Tariq, same thing was happening in both the LEC and LCS. No team had done that. And our expectation is if there was going to be a team that touched that champion, it was going to be Sunning. And already he's come into the split with the Sonatara. And it means that someone like Sword Art can play his Tom Kench, which yep. uh, has been a favorite of his coming through spring and now summer. So it's exciting to see this duo actually come forward as a duo. So let's see the performance in the games that they've had. Because for me, the laning phase had never been a primary focus for Sunning. But they've been able to hit wonderful hits with that. In fact, that was a primary weakness for uh, the player SMLZ in his career. That he wasn't, I guess, since OMG days, okay. a strong laning phase player. But he was able to have great solo kills on that front, get great CS advantages, and hit team fight marks like these, where he's well protected by Biu Biu, Weiwei, or even Hacker when he's finding his games as well. This team has focus, something they severely lacked in the spring split. And now that SMLZ is in control, now that there are so many different members on the team, it feels like his voice is the voice of reason in this roster, where Biu Biu, Wei Wei, where's the control? Well, it's in that bottom line. And remember a change that not a lot of people will see, but of course there's also a fact that happened, is the coaching staff change as well. Of course. That you move away from Comet, Comet goes back towards Korea, and now you bring in Fluid Wind, who... Former also, Flash Wolves, yeah. boom. So he has that relationship with Maple and Sword Art. There is now a ironed out game plan, better communication with on, uh, within the roster. Easy Hoon is still there, but remember Easy Hoon is fluent in Chinese, so he can be able to communicate. They have, they're fairly happy with his performance on that one as well. So now you have a Suning that are recalibrated for the split, and they're doing well. On the up and up, where you've now partnered them with Dominus Esports, and Dominus Esports, come in with a rebrand, you expect the same big things that you saw in spring, but they're not performing well either. So this is the trick, right? Because we're going to pull up the stats that they've had so far, or at least when I say stats, I just literally mean the fact that they've been losing, taking a lot of L's on that one. But these teams, you shouldn't be too like unhappy about the fact that you lost to EDG, Top Esports, Invictus Gaming. And for people that watched uh, you know, LNG perform this split, they're undefeated, and they're looking great with yep. Plex and Thuan right now. So for them, the real test starts tonight. That Dominus is going up against a team that is seen as, you know, I would say similar competitors. In fact, 
people would inv come into the split thinking that Dominus are better than Suning quite easily based off of their uh, playoff performance. Of so not only do they have this, their next series, they go up against VG Gaming in week five. So this should be the easiest portion of their schedule from this point on. They need to pick up a win. While Dominus may be underutilized or rather underestimated coming into this split, there are still some core issues that I would like to address. Go for uh, it. If you'd like to follow me there, because Chung Hong in the top lane for me seems to be my biggest criticism. In the top side, he's a great Scion, but where is the flexibility in this meta that relies on flexes? So my issue, and this is going to be a good topic, because you're right, when it comes to what is what he's comfortable with, it's going to be the Scion. It's what he's been the most successful with. But I'm not, I don't call him uh, a one-directional type. He, I, I, he has many champions that he's able to pick out. The Cassiopeia comes to mind. But it's more so a problem with his landing phase. Regardless with the picks that he goes towards, he is happy with taking those L's in lane because he wants to be able to group up for team fights. And that's what their identity is at the end of the day. So now you're in a solo lane dominant meta where you're not going to be winning lane. And just as recently, they've been completely flopping in team fights. Team fight setup has been incredibly poor. A strength that they had in Spring Split being set up for, you know, dragon fights have now become a major detriment to their squad. So yep. uh, they need to be able to go back to what was strong last time around. And it's difficult for such a rookie roster. That's one solo lane in Chung Hong. Uh, before we get to the jungle and how he's feeling the weight of Dominus at the moment, I would like to talk about Twyla just super quick. Go for it. The mid lane for Dominus Esports. I think Twyla's looking a lot better, a lot more confident than last split but we're just not seeing that follow through. I mean, whenever we have a discussion about Twilo, only confusion comes through, right? Because he is the X factor for the team. Because you can never say that he's performing poorly because immediately you start thinking about his Jason quirky performances that he oh. had last split where he just popped off. And that's something that will permeate in your thoughts. And you're like, okay, well, he's not bad. Uh, he is a great mid laner currently. The only issue comes once back to the last point that I made about consistency. You have to be a consistent performer, and especially if your team, if your game plan is going downhill and you are a supporting, a facilitator, if you are a zillion player, then you look bad as a result. So essentially, he, he a lot of his stats, he even makes jokes about how his stats are consistently poor, yep. but he's always going to be consistently making those wins happen. So if I look towards stats, it's never going to be right for him because he's always going to be losing out in laning phase. He's never going to be picking up CS on uh, uh, compared to his competition. But they need to be able to play through the core, which is mid lane. So you hit it on the mark. If I'm looking Dominus, I'm looking at the mid lane and top lane. These solo lanes need to be able to perform. Going up, up against Suning where Bubi's been playing the Renekton for the lane. In the mid lane, Maple's been playing nothing but Silas, it seems, as well. And he's had some strong dominant performances. So... I'd like to see how this pairs up and address that earlier question of how they look against a mid-tier team that could potentially make playoffs as we get into game one. Yeah, these are teams of growth. You already mentioned the Silas. That's going to be banned immediately. Dominus have done their homework. So already seeing uh, the Sona and Silas bans are something that you welcome. Yeah, more homework there for Dominus Esports. But the first pick locked in as a Nico here to start off the series. Yeah, Nico is a great mid lane option right now. Right now, what you always want to see out of facilitating mid laners are A, CC, slows, just the utility that you can provide, and shove in lane, and she gives you both. So I love the fact that we've seen a change from the press the attacks, Nico top lanes, which you're still going to be seeing, and like it's still a great option if you have a, a fantastic split push top lane uh, uh, talent. Yep. But the current meta revolves around you being able to play Glacial Augment mid, get your shove consistently so you can move around your jungle. That's something Xiao Peng is going to love. Twilight's already picked that up before as well. So keep in the back of your mind that uh, for Xiaopunk, he's lost his jungle option once again in the Nidalee. The Olaf as a response picked up here from Weiwei, and this is an early Azir as. Wow. I mean, not a lot of people right now around the world even like Azir at the moment, because it just feels like it's too slow, doesn't set up for your plays too often, and has a lot of counter picks that can deal with you. So now they're banking on the fact that this is going to be uh, you know, Nico going into the mid lane, and I think they're safe to make that call. I just want to see if there's any bit of, you know, way to support him through the lane. I think Olaf is the trick for that. Funnily enough, the last Azir to be picked up here in the LPL was against Sooning in that game two from JDG. So, uh, getting flashbacks there, see if Maple can use it to that fruition. For Dominus Esports, they're looking elsewhere. It's the bottom lane they're interested in. A Yumi, a rare pickup here. Yeah, Yumi's going to be fun. Uh, for Dominus, it's going to be interesting because, of course, Mark has been the engaged type. He's the type that wants to be able to go on the, like the Galio or Alistar to pass. But 
You need to be able to play Yumi in this meta. She's just busted at the moment. And I think, that, you know, going back to the Azir point, now being paired up with Lux, there's a lot of great disengage and pick potential there for Suning. I already love what they have for the first three picks here, just because not only, have the, not only do you have great jungle pacing, they already started out with a jungle ban in Italy, and they can continue to go down that mark knowing that Dominus haven't picked up a jungler. Yep. Lee Sin's probably the next best. But, back to my point, Nico engages are actually very easy to dissuade. If you have strong enough vision control, if you're doing well in the early portions of the game, then the Azir ultimate can even just be held for that. Even the Lux Q that you've been looking towards, the Light Binding, can just be able to keep her at an arm's reach. That was the issue of last, I mean yesterday, the, the series that you casted, where the Nico wasn't able to do much if she didn't get the flank. Yeah. I just want to point out Light Binding into the Civil Lane. Uh, super hard to deal with because you've always got two abilities you want to stop. And what it gets paired up with an AD carry is going to be the next question. But while we're sitting on that, while we're mulling it over, jungle bans here from Sooning. The Rek'Sai already gone with the Jarvan still being up. Yeah, Jarvan might be the next go-to. I did say Lee Sin, but usually much happier dealing with the Lee Sin if I'm an Olaf. So Olaf is only really worried about a Jarvan just for the Cataclysm. Then you would have to use your Flash. You yep. don't have a dash on that one. So it would make a lot of sense to take that one off the board. But Rise, Rise, Flex instead. Okay. Rise is something they don't want Dominus to have. Something that hasn't really been prioritized by Dominus in the past. So, uh, interesting ban away by Suning. But remember, if you look back to what Dominus have set up for themselves, that we're pretty confident that's going to be a Nico mid, Rai's top lane is a matchup that you look towards and say that it's just such a dominant top, top lane pick. Yeah. Like, we saw what the Shy could do with the Rise last time he had it. Not only had full autonomy on the top side of the map, but of course, he was able to just completely blow up <laughs> the squishiest champion of the enemy team with the Oblivion Orb pickup. One shotting the Lux, one shotting mid lane. So if you're Sunning, you don't want yourself essentially having to worry too much about the top side, knowing that Bu is that one lane, that one weakness that is really sprouted for the team, then give him a good matchup. Performing so darn well recently, that's right. Sunning, there's the cannon locked in here for the top side. Yeah, I, I was saying that he's performing poorly personally. Oh, wait. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was He's had some good games, some good performances. I he was going better. But largely, uh, he's been the lane that people have started to bully in the most recent loss. So that's something that I would... If I'm Dominus, want to focus on a little bit more. You're starting to see that. The Kennen uh, pick, just because you know, you're happy about the lane matchup, theoretically, knowing that Rise is off the chart, but immediately, the Rumble pickup from Dominus should do quite well. Yeah, that's right. We've seen Rumbles here in the LPL, but look at the win right there. Hasn't been as successful on the middle to lower tier teams at the moment. I'm curious to see how it's executed it by in. Dominus and how this goes through it. This fits his play style to a T. I know that they're just going between back and forth. There we go. Kindred on Xiaopeng. There is great reason to be excited about this. He is one of the best Kindred players in the world. And I'm talking about like Kire. Um, there are a few players out there right now that you really respect, highly touted Kindred players. And I think right now Xiaopeng is that type. We've been writing him high as a jungler for a good reason. So put Scores him on something like a carry. One. Yeah. Almost forgot Scores uh, Kindred. Offside with that. Uh, fun pick up for Sooning here while we're mulling over is going to be the Caitlyn. So uh, SMLZ once again looking to challenge the lane. Oh my god. This is the type of lane that you just feel so sad about going <laughs> into. Right? Not, I know a lot of players, uh, professional players, hate going up against Sivir Yumi just because of how much shove that it has. How easy it is to land your Q as a Sivir once the slow from Yumi's Q lands as well. So like thinking of it that perspective, yeah. You're upset about Gala and Mark, but I'm upset about just the... 70% HP that you can take off of a champion. Level 2 with the Lux Binding, Trap, Auto Attack, Q, Q. Trap. Yeah. It's just sad, man. It's just, it's just, it doesn't make you feel right. You spell shield one of those. You deny 10%. That's it. That's all you can deny at this point. Uh, so going up against the Civil Lane, SMLZ are going to have a good time. And uh, when we're hyping up the bottom lane of Sooning, this seems right to start off the series with. 100%. Like, you have control in the bottom side of the map, paired up with great jungle priority, like being able to uh, you know, go through your camps with the greatest of ease. The only concern that I have now is if we're just talking about purely jungle matchup, Kindred wins out in skirmishes with the range that she has, right? People always talk about, well, what happens if Kindred walks into a bush and gets hit with an axe? Yeah, of course she's going to die, right? So Olaf has to be smart in how he paths around the jungle. You can see that's uh, Mark, by the way, last split, he made that bet. That if you go far or you know be able to take down UDG, I'm pretty sure that was a bad. Of course, making the playoffs, I think it was. Then he would 
cosplay, and he did it. He went on stream. He did it. Everybody loved it. Now it's being used against him. <laughs> In the posters that Suning had, they just have him tied up along with a dinosaur, Dominus. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they just made it seem like, you know what, now this is who you are. It'll die out eventually, just like Amazing Jay's cosplay. That lasted about a split. So give him some time, see what happens. You got to be proud about it. He is. He ain't going to, you know, bat an eye. In fact, he should do exactly what Sneaky is right now. Make money off that. Get on that Patreon. Embrace it. Hell yeah. Well, we're about to get into game number one. Doesn't even look like we're looking at the rosters here. We're just going to show the logo, jump on in, and for good reason. Dominus versus Sooning is a testament to where Dominus can stand here in the summer split. If they're really falling, well, they can rise to the occasion and take down the likes of Sooning, who are already there standing strong. That is the next series, my friend. LGD will be playing in the next series. Um, that all said, I want to be able to see what the keystones are here. We'll have a quick look across, because Maple, I always love lethal tempo Tempo is here. It's just personal favorite. You get into the mid to late game fights, and you don't stop. Yeah, that's always a good kind of debate point around uh, Azir players around, because you see Halo Blades, Lethal Tempo, Comet. Electrocute. Yeah, that's true as well. Um, but yeah, Lethal Tempo is just a great team fight tool that you're able to use for yourself. And you know he's going to be able to get out of lane pretty scot-free with this one. I'm not too concerned with the poke, because there is none uh, that he's going to be dealing with. So I think he's going to get shoved in. I think that's like if once uh, Twyla is able to get level 9, rank 5 on Q. But you can already see. Big start from Xiao Pong, straight to the blue buff, which was watered out early. Yeah, so level ones are my favorite thing, just kind of discussing because it, it, it can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've been casting with me for too much, uh, for too long. But yeah, sadly in the LPL, you get into the game about 50 seconds in, and that means you already lost out on you know, where the invade went through, yep. what the ward was. Kindred is able to get the early ward on top of red, so immediately turning into a vert vertical jungle. So the drafting that Suning had initially, where they banned out the rise and hoping that they had a, to a strong topside blind pick, I mean, they didn't get that. Rumble in the top side of the map is going to be going to be shoving, and the only concern is that Rumble doesn't have too good of a wave control. Probably one of the worst because he has to trade through the wave. Yeah. Uh, so Kindred's making the best of it by pathing topside and getting a full clear here. But that does mean you need to get that early ward out. Take a look at the mini map. Rumble does just that, knowing that Olaf should be in the area. Yep, gonna go to Krugs, knows that the red's gone now. Uh, that is pretty rough for Maple, but what we expected, trades to be back and forth. Twyla does have the shove. Well, for Xiao Punk, he's gonna triple buff. He's in a good position. And uh, Twyla has potion advantage. Uh, and top, not only just the, of course, both of them have biscuits, but he has one extra corrupting potion to his name. So it's gonna be a little bit more of a concern for Maple being shoved in, being out traded just a little bit more heavily. Makes it so. Shao Pung has an easier bit of control on the top side of the map, so Dominus already starting off this game strongly. That's all you need. This is his mark as well, so first mark going to be taken here by the Kindred Jungle. And Shao Pung to that start as well. He can start roaming up, maybe look towards top side, but uh, good vision control from Biu Biu. Going to drop a ward into that try, and Shao Pung wasn't going to go there anyway. There we go. And it respawns, uh, or at least the mark comes back onto the map about every 40 seconds. Yep. Makes it so you can now start focusing on the next few camps, which is Raptors plus Gromp. So if Gromp is not on the field for the enemy, if let's say Olaf, he had it projected that Olaf has taken Gromp, then he needs to be able to put himself in a position to end up like helping Twyla shove through mid or going alongside him so he can take advantage of the second mark, which would be the enemy Raptors. So Speaking of Raptors. But he's not set up for this. Hasn't been spotted way, way no! at full health. Xiao Pang gonna walk into him. Here comes the Undertow, the 1v1. Viking mad, Viking not sad. That's first blood there going to Sooning. Remember what I said before the game even started? Walking into a bush, and an Olaf is just sitting in there. There's not much you can do about the matchup. Even though you pick it for the matchup, the range advantage that Kindred would have. Be able to duck and dodge with your Q. Uh, you don't get that shot when he's already on top of you with the first Q slot. It's just such simple pathing. Gets the first blood, walks to mid, help get the shove out for Maple, who can now back and is in a very good position. Doesn't have to use the TP to get back to lane as well. So away we're already getting this game kicked off. And why we talk about the Olaf in the LPL so common is because of plays like this. Yeah, and so that's something that will start to snowball. 
Uh, he's picked up his blue smite, so the early slow that he will have will compile up with his Q. So just essentially, it flashes down on a member. Thankfully, Xiao Peng didn't use his flash. Then he's going to be just jumping on top of you. He's going to get a kill on top of you. That being said, we've had our discussion at the beginning of the game about <laughs> SMLZ throughout his career. Yep. Sword Art's not feeling too happy, but take a look at SMLZ. He's going to be on uh, the pro view for the LPL side on Douyu and Huya. Makes sense. Cool. I did hear that they started charging now, so <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, it's not a free experience anymore. I'm glad. Uh, I was saying that yesterday or the day before, so uh, that's, that's not too good. But Maple in the mid lane. This is a trade he doesn't want to take. Twyla, by the way, has hit level 6 here, so Pop Blossom ready. Now to the bottom lane, you're seeing trades go back and forth now. There is a pro view focus on SMLZ, who's had to back away, but has the TP to get back into lane after picking up a BF sword on his first back. Yeah, and that's going to be the most influential part, coming through with his uh, BF sword. Now, remember, the auto attack range that you have is the reason why Caitlyn does quite well in the matchup. The only concern, once again, is the fact that now you have to start taking the Sivir Q into account. She can start landing that on a champion as long as Mark is able to nail his own. Now, remember, he's low in mana, so going to be a lot easier for Gala and Mark until they expend their own teleport, get back to base. But it's time to look to the top side because Xiaopeng is making the move but spotted out going for Krugs. Now, not a mark up here, but assuming that Weiwei is going to be nearby, he proxies away for a bit into Bubu underneath the turret, slicing oh! Maelstrom. That's the outplay you need to see. Chung Hong goes down. The Equalizer comes late and Maple to get into the play. He's done enough. The Emperor's defied. Slices DMO. They had no idea where Maple was. He comes out of nowhere and he gets the second kill for his team. So well played and well orchestrated by Suni. Split across the board as well. Give one to top, jungle and mid. And Maple makes the roam happen, doesn't miss out on too much. Apart from this half a wave. Best roam of his game. I sang the praise of Maple for that play. But Pew Pew to start it all off. The moment he saw Chang Hong got aggro. With that, he was like, alright, I'm in there. I can immediately get the stun proc on top of him. Two turret shots and he's dead. So you'd have to question Chang Hong in that exact situation. Why he even started out before the wave hit, before Quindred was in position, he set them out to dry. They would have still lost that because, you know, Weiwei was in the area at the exact same time as Maple, but they didn't even give themselves a chance to start it all off. This just puts Xiaopeng so far behind as well. Already 10 CS in the jungle that he's dropped by. His second death of the game as well. And uh, he's out of it. He's picked up one mark. That's simply what it is right now. He's out of the game. It sucks at this stage. He can make another play. I think his best uh, play would be... Are we looking bot side? I'm thinking bot or mid. Uh, okay. He just needs to start farming up is my call. If he gets to level 6, he's going to be happy. But if he ever tries to go for a gank at the same time as Olaf, who's out leveled, mm -hmm. has Ragnarok, and you don't have flash, that's suicidal. So I think it makes a lot of sense for him to farm up to six and then try and look for a gank through mid or bot. Especially since in the LPL, we have Warriors Olaf 99% of the time. So it's just for, far more efficient. That's yes. the issue with uh, Cinder Hulk in general, the tank build. But Ooh, final chapter. Wow, Sword Art took one bit of damage and that was it. It sucks when you get hit by that first Q. Yep. You got to feel the pain. So that was heal burned by Sword Art. Two summoners down in the bottom lane, but both Ooh. flashes available. While well, Xiaopeng is making the aggressive move towards blue buff, but uh, mistimed, looking for his mark instead. But they do not know that that river was warded, that there was an extra ward that caught Xiaopeng in rotation. Take a look at this. Is the 1v1 going to happen, though? Because Chang Hong is overheated in that moment, has the equalizer. Could have been the fight back for a solo kill. Yeah, not much happens here. He's going to be able to eat the wave at his tower. If I'm thinking about what Ri you know Rumble should do here. I'd uh, push and base. Be a good timing. But speaking of base timing, this is getting a little rough. It's getting annoying for the bottom lane, but Weiwei's nearby. Gala and Mark still able to poke out the wave, and uh, SMLZ takes that one and thinks about going back. It's funny how a ranged matchup is redefined when Yumi is into the mix. Yes. Like the whole idea of Caitlyn versus Sivir. Largely, Caitlyn is pretty ecstatic about the matchup. Then you have to deal with the effective range of Yumi, and that's just is infinity. <laughs> it actually just hurts. When you set out the boomerang blade like Help! that and you follow that up, SMLZ, the 90 caliber net just to get him out. And a bit of turret plating there for bottom lane of DMO while the dragon gets started up. It was still divided between him and Mark, unfortunately. You'd want the full uh, gold on to Gallop, but it's all right. That cat gets gold too. He's going to be pretty happy about it. And the dragon adds onto the mix. When you have bottom lane priority, this makes it very easy for Xiaopeng to start this one up and take it away. So. You know, trying to pull himself back into the game. That'll be a starting piece alongside the Scuttlecrab. 
And now I'm just happy about what Xiao Peng has done. He's really focused on the lanes that are doing well. Doesn't make any abnormal ganks. Allows Phyla, Gala, and Mark to just essentially continue to shove out their lanes so they can do what they can do in the bottom side of the map. Now it's going to be a game for them about dragons. Next one's going to be Ocean. They can essentially try and look for the next one. I think Suning are going to be pretty confident picking that fight. But take a look at the swap here. Ten minutes in, we see this from multiple teams. Yes. Their next goal is going to be Rift Herald. Very common in the LPL. Like, again, that 99% stat I'm going to use here again uh, has been the go-to in the past couple of weeks. So the Kindred now has a Yumi attached to her. We'll be walking up to the top side, but this is spotted out. Good Pixel Brush Ward here from Suning. Uh, they'll be onto it straight away. But they can't do anything. Uh, okay. They've kept their dual lane to the bot side of the map. Unless if they're looking for a play here. They're hard forcing. This underneath is really the weird. SMLZ takes the turret. Equalizer comes down. Bubu forces the flash out of Chang Hong. They get the stun eventually. Light binding into the big beam. Sword Art takes two turret shots oh my and God. dies. Ace in the hole will get it, but a one for one trade. That was messy from Sooning. It was. But they felt like they were forced to make the play. Usually teams just rotate their dual lane topside. Match them if you can. But they put themselves in a 1D, uh, you know, in a, in a lane swap situation with no objective bot side. So it really felt like Biu Biu was set up to fail. He made the teleport bot side, and I think that that was a good heads up play. Execution obviously is difficult when a rumble just has ultimate. They're gonna struggle now as well, because DMO have the upper hand. They're gonna get first turret blood. Mid lane is stable for them. So this is a good recovery into the game as to what before was small wins. This definitely a big one. And this goes back to what made Dominus so strong last split. The IQ the understanding of how to play out the early portions of the game. And even though Xiao Peng, as you had mentioned, fell behind early, it wasn't to his fault, he just got surprised. Yeah. And so he understood you need to play through his bot side and take a look at this. No one's here for this as well. So a bit more damage gonna go on that top side and Chung Hong coming in for SMLZ. Here we go into the flame spitter. Help! SMLZ getting the rest of Sooning, but is he gonna die before then? One electric harpoon lands, but they get the light binding down, they get the damage, he is dead. SMLZ even picks up the kill, but the Rift Hell's still going! Alright, we ain't stopping anywhere. <laughs> Take it! Suning keep trading off these kills for objectives, and DMO getting the upper hand. You'll be finally here, but that net inhibitor turret, getting ahead of myself as well, almost goes down. There we go. You want to keep it up, though. You want waves to be bouncing up topside for as long as possible. I would actually be upset if the top lane turret went down. Because my concern is that you have waves still continuing to push topside, Biu Biu would be able to hold the wave and essentially like freeze up and challenge uh, Dominus to make a play on the bottom side of the map. Now, that's still Dominus having, of course, the ability to play uh, aggressively bot side with no, like, you know, Sunning not having a numbers game. But I think it's still a good idea to hold that top lane tower. And although we see a longer lane in the top side, uh, we've got a similar scenario in the bottom side as well where Gala has gone back to, gonna farm up and Work towards that second item. You can see for both AD carries, Essence Reaver versus Infinity Edge, SMLZ, just raw hardcore damage to kick us off. Okay, that makes sense. Of course, the ultimate damage is one thing you're looking for. And on top of that, the crit chance uh, increase, not the crit chance, the damage yep. on crit chance um, increase when you're able to hit your autos is a positive. I think that this, like, not much is going to be changing about what Suning does well as a composition, which is group up, try and siege. That's something that I would love to see. Alongside a Lux, that's actually highly underrated. Good steal here. Yeah, it was a nice one for Weiwei, just with the Undertow and uh, Smite combined. I'm uh, still looking for something. Now, this is dangerous, but Weiwei is about half a second late. <laughs> Had no idea who was in the bush, but always got to throw that axe just to see. Now, they put themselves in a good spot. I mean, right now, if you're looking at where Kennen is stationed, he's just in a good placement just in case anyone comes in on a flank. Always there for his team. Now they're going to be able to take this turret. That's what their composition is set up to achieve. So still through the mid lane, they're going to find a pick on the Twyla who gets half health but not burnt out. They hold this turret, but look at the top side of the map. Chung Hong is just pushing away. Will get the wave back up once again, but uh, with no vision in the top side jungle, Suning can make a play. I would, I would love to see Chang Hong rotating into the play for his ultimate. I mean, this is just going to be the same thing you'll be seeing for the next 10 minutes. Suning grouping up for your uh, mid lane outer turret. Inner turret even. Uh, they have a great amount of range and even more threatening. The Lux Binding is going to set up for literally everything for Suning. Uh, you need to try and find that flank to break it up. Chang Hong is the key. Not only really that, if uh, they get caught out as well, let's not forget for a team like Suning, the catch potential still there as we talked about uh, how this comp actually works. And setting up towards that Ocean Dragon, we, we might see it in fruition. 
We, uh, we said that Sinning would try and contest for it this time around, and they are. They're in the area. At least you got your demand, though, Raz. Chung Hong is now with the rest of the team of DMO. Uh, he's going to be spotted out in a full five on five in the works. Got to watch out, Wei Wei. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, Bubu is in the middle. He flashes in with a slicing mouse from finally the lamps. The spike comes out, but now for Sooning, Maple shuffles them backwards. He is here in full control as he just turns on the Gala. Lethal tempo in effect, but ace in the hole it is as Bubu making the escape and Twyla oh, chasing him. him down. He's done low. He sends out a shuriken just to try and save his life. Twyla pops on top of him though as DMO come out roughly even. Such a strong fight for Sunning at the end, and they're the ones that can stand tall off this one. Double binding. Yeah, I take it back. Not roughly even. In fact, Twyla even feeling the measure. A three for two trade in the end, and this turret going down with the ocean. Yes, so that's the major win for Sunning. The fact that they are much stronger at the end of the fight, they could pick up the tower that they've been sieging for, and the one that they were even fighting for to begin with, the Ocean Dragon, huge fight win for Sunin. Mountain, mountain following up from that as well. Uh, we'll look at how this started. Biu Biu came out big with his Kennen ultimate. Now the Kindred ultimate made all things come awry, but this is why the Azir seemingly was so influential here. Remember, the Kindred got picked into the Azir. They knew the Azir was locked in rather early, and that's one of the major weaknesses of, uh, of the Kindred pick is any champion that can boot you out of your own ultimate. Now, he technically, they were still in the ultimate by the end of the duration of his, ultimate, uh, his own ultimate, but he kept the enemy team in the fight. There was no strong disengage from Dominus, and that's what was really a, a strong factor for Sunning there. And when Olaf walks into the middle of that ult, you get him low, you get him fast attacking, uh, so that when that ult stops, the Olaf pretty much rampages at you anyway. So there's so many elements of Sunning that can succeed through the Lamb's response. A lot of spread gold here. We're talking about turret plating. A lot of that the reason is because Mark decided to keep around Gala for a little <laughs> bit too long. That would have been a larger gold for Gala at the end. A little unfortunate there, but if you just take a look through it, that was just because Topside was just completely run rough shot by that Rift Herald. So Dominus got themselves back into the game because of that. But because of the last team fight, you know, Sinning was able to retain that. This is when you feel bad for the KFC, you know, the Colonel. Because this game has been a back and forth. He has no idea where to go. Uh, of course, 2,000 gold lead here for Spooning after that last fight. And big items that were already on the board. You're now looking at a needlessly large rod in the top side. Bubia looks like he's going for the spell, uh, the spell binder once again. Yeah, good call here. I'm just going to go back and say... Uh, I'm just going to go back and say that, you know, the whole Colonel thing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't rear my head out too. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't yeah. touch it. He's trying to defend the Colonel. I mean, personally speaking, if I'm the, this game's coming out and you've been wrong about 80% of the time, mm -hmm. you hide your face. I'm not sure what the Colonel's win rate is, but uh, I think it's not too bad. So I'll side with the Colonel, see what he says. But uh, Raz, my concern in this game yeah, at the know. moment, the fact that SMLZ silently getting more and more gold. Up in this top lane, gets a solo turret. He already had the rapid fire count, and he picked up another kill in that fight. And while Sooning keep him quiet, and Twilight farms his side wave, they're making a move in the top side around the Caitlyn. I'm not too happy with the fact that he was alone. It's nice that now Lux is in the area. You saw how close the last fight was with, you know, uh, SMLZ almost getting picked up by Chang Hong. But this is what you want to see out of Sooning's composition. I just do not think that Dominus needs to uh, consistently look to trade in the opposite side. I think they should challenge for these fights because if you look at Suning's composition, they don't have a lot of great, strong, like frontline disengage options. They have a lot of uh, wonderful offensive abilities, and I think if we're coming down to it, Kennen's ultimate is probably going to be a great way to disengage from flanks. But I mean, it's not too strong. You can play around it. In fact, the best way of doing that is the Rumble ultimate. Yep. Um, the fact that they're trading gold, I think, is not the right call. But you know, they're still in the game. If they want to make these trades as well, play the aggressive move. Uh, go turret for turret. They're missing out on TPs on the side of DMO. Gala and Twala both don't have that mo mobility. We're sooning three TPs on the side ready to go. And I think at the end of the day, BB will be happy on side lane. So he's not concerned about anything happening in the bottom side of the map. They just opened up the top side when Baron is coming up in 40 seconds. Yep. So there is so much pick potential on this squad. They can move between the inner mid and inner top lane turret. So they have a lot of options here. Sooning should never leave the top side. Vision's blind in that top side as well. While Demo have control over the next upcoming dragon, it's not going to matter. Vision just cleared by Sooning. 20 seconds till that Baron comes up. And that river is dark as anything. Yeah, they don't know that just yet. I think they haven't really popped their uh, red trinkets. You're already seeing them start to. So red trinkets up and running. And... Uh, 
Trying to remember. There we go. Even uh, Ken was able to use it as he was moving towards the bottom side of the map. So here's the siege that we've been looking for. I love Sony playing the aggressive factor in this top lane turret, but there is so much wave clear here from DMO. Hard for them to continue the siege, just back to the river again. That's why you'll see the top teams, and this is a good challenge for Sunning now, that they'll have both mid and top side wave, at least the waves that they're rotating with, crash at the same time. So they truly do have an option of bouncing top, keeping one member there, and then moving to the bot yep. uh, mid lane. Ooh, hello on the hunt into SMLZ, forces the flash, Gala. Two ults for the bottom lane duo of DMO. TP comes in from Bubu. And Weiwei took a lot of damage. They can't even counterfight off that one. So they're going to lose a lot of vision off this. This is a concern you probably had about that Warrior's Olaf. Yeah. Great snowballing potential, but you don't have much of an HP to your name. That's right. Weiwei not even towards the Black Cleaver for an extra bit of health. Uh, so as he picks up the dragon, he will be able to pick up some of the lettuce leaves in the river and head towards the mountain straight away. That's spawned and no one from DMO around it. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, when you're getting shoved in mid lane, you can't do too much. Rumble's in position, though, so you can already see them starting to get there. If it's slow enough, they'll take this fight. Chang has been spotted out, and he's starting to do a lot of damage with the Oblivion Orm and that Leandri's Torment in the inventory over the wall. Shop guard right is still, and he gets it. Take the mark, take the kill, take the prowling projectiles. Weiwei caught out as well. Give you out of position, slicing Maelstrom defensively. Never what you want to see out of a cannon. You never want to see Weiwei stuck on the wrong side of the wall. He didn't have flash anymore. I don't think we saw how he used flash. And I want to find out. Sir? I think he used it to get away. We'll find out. Investigative Raz is on the case. But now, 20 seconds, Raz, no jungler, 4v5. DMO see an opening, it looks like they're going to take it. Yeah, but I think Suning have to slow them down. You look at the composition Dominus have, they don't have any tanks. They can be stalled here at this Baron, but, but man, are they burning with yeah, the double mountain. Double mountain dragon that comes through means that now Chang Hong can zone off. The rest of them can continue doing it. Bubu does not have ultimate, but has flash sword out with the light finding on a Gala with the final oh! chapter. Pop plus them with the flash down. Immediately, Twala makes his name known again. The lambs respite the Baron. Everyone lives, and that is what you want to see out of the Team Fighters DMO. So well executed. Just on the top side, you saw that Xiao Pong was running out of HP on that Baron buff alone, but used his ultimate to keep himself alive and get that execution on Baron buff while his team was taking the fight. When you have yourself a Sivir with two items, and Nico with two items as well, and the Rumble just picks up his second, now with the Baron buff, this team in the mid game starts becoming deadly. Man, I want to see the replay. There's actually, this is the one game he asked for a replay. double replay, yeah. yeah. I'm asking for too many. But that was just so wonderful to see. That fight, when they didn't have a true front line, their ability to kind of you know, trade focus. You can look to focus towards the Baron buff okay. to keep the rest of your team on the fight. Chang Hong splitting up his te the enemy team, and then you get to see the benefit of that. So here's the Rumble ultimate. Sword Art can't do anything to help. So he's trying to burst down Kindred, does that, but of course Xiao Punk keeps himself alive, and you can see the result of the fight that ensued. Mark and Twyla paired up there in the end of that fight as well, and that's what made it so magical, is that Mark got the root down after hitting those three final chapters, and Twyla, easy pop blossom for him to execute. At this point, DMO the execution much better than we expected coming into this, and now running up with the Baron buff, and oh, onto no. SMLZ, Chung Hong flashes forward, goes Golden, survives, the Flame Spitter spitting out some Fire Breath and a half, as the ultimate is wasted again, Bubu can't get the execution, and Chung Hong dying here means that for Suning, this could be the recovery. Onto Twyla's fake clone, they get nothing, and Xiao Peng and Gala both live. Execution goes awry, but still the fight over to DMO. Another great Rumble ultimate. <laughs> that just kept SMLZ on that red carpet. He wanted to get away, but there was one option, and he had to walk that line. So that's tough, dog. That's, uh, you know what, I feel bad. He's improved so much over the course of this game. It's been the story of Chung Hong gets bullied out in the earlier portion, caught out, surprised, as I believe you put it. Now to the point where this rumble being perfectly executed, where other teams in the LPL can't make that same execution. Yeah, so let's take a look at this one more time. Rumble Ultimate comes through while he's already slowed, by the way. If he goes to the right, he's getting chased down by Chang Hong. He still did at the end of the day. That's Flash and, of course, Stopwatch to be able to make his case. Snare, exhausted. Biu Biu couldn't take that fight. It was rough as well. The Pop Blossom and the Slicing Maelstrom both used defensively, but rather just negated Biu Biu from ever getting on those three members. So with Demo playing like this, they're still in control, they still have 50 seconds of Baron buff left. This is the type of game that I've been wishing for and waiting for. Like, we've seen so many snowball type of scenarios 
with one of our best teams, with FBX, EDG, uh, Invictus Gaming, e even to a certain degree. Cool. When they take the field, it feels like a snowball. This time around, this is genuinely a back and forth experience where I have no idea who's going to be able to take this one. I will say for certain, Chang Hong and Twyla are playing up massively. We wanted to see the best out of the soul laners of DMO, and I think we've got it at the start of game number one, but now it still comes down to that execution. Triple Mountain on the menu after this push, but SMLZ oh, here no. alone. You can't be alone, especially in range of the Q from Mark, but if they were able to get out of this, it's just a lot of damage. Yubi in a great flanking position, but didn't have the flash available, so he's going to let that one go alongside the inner turret in the mid lane. You always have to be aware, cognizant of the fro uh, free poke that comes with the Q from Mark. That slow is extraordinary, and it does some damage on SMLZ, so he needs to be aware of that, just in case if there's a follow-up from Godless Q. Same if I'm thinking about Twyla as well. Here we go. Trying Shepard to pick on someone. May have found a cheeky Olaf. Won't get the third proc here, but Wolf goes back to position. Well, Gala with his wave clear and his boomerang blade starting to throw some cheeky pizzas out. This mountain, they have control of it. Yeah, but that's force uh, forcing mid priority from Sunning. I wonder if they want to contest this or if they wait for the next wave and start shoving that out. Gala poked out a little bit. Can't get the spell shield off. And positioning corner right. Nope. Triple mountain just given over. That's a feels bad. <laughs> At this point, suddenly, next Baron, you need to be in positioning of that. That is so much damage on the side of Dominus. And you saw how quickly they were able to just burn through the last uh, Baron buff. This one's going to be easier if it gets to that point. The sacrifice, a quid pro quo, Sooning say. They head to the inhibitor turret. Now, this might be a bit of a fight, but getting the inner off mid priority is still a small win. Your Sooning, start backing into Fog of War and make the best opportunity with Sword Art's Light Binding. If you can make that call, a Zier ult to follow up, that would be your ticket back into this one. Yeah. Also, that slicing Maelstrom, three, four members. It's all about timing. Yeah. Because if you make that call, it's not even, in my mind, a good call with Shaw Punk still holding on to his ultimate. So it's really just a mind game about if you can get a good burst on the Shaw Punk to force his ultimate out, get the Azir ultimate to follow up, can an ultimate to end? Yep. The Kindred ulti, like all of this comes into mind, so you have to think of someone to start off this fight and uh, be able to peel Shao Punk's ultimate off. I think it's going to be the life binding from Sword Art. Okay, we'll keep an eye out for that because Sword Art going to be crucial then. Uh, but for DMO, hovering around this next Baron, which spawns in 30 seconds. Also want to point out there's potential for the cannon to just burst people down and stun the Kindred before she could ult in a rare case. So there are so many elements at play here for Sooning, but the advantage still to DMO, the pressure on SN. Yeah. You can see right now Gala's trying to position himself to make the best use of Mark's slow and yep. poke. Nothing's really coming about it. Infinity Edge, by the way, on Gala, if we haven't noticed there. Almost towards the fourth item, which is going to be a Mort. Uh, SMLZ trailing here, but has opted in for the QSS. So AD carry measure still there. Uh, measuring up better for Gala. And remember, both supports are Enchanter supports at the end of the day. Yep. Their itemizing breakpoints are incredibly crucial to how they succeed right now. So you see Athene's Unholy Grill on both ends. Ardent Sensor is something I'm looking towards Mark. He has double AD carry that he can work with with both Xiaopong yeah. and Gala. So right now, Xiaopong is at a pretty good p point of his build. If he has that Ardent Sensor on top of him, He's doing amazing things, so... Oh no, you don't want SMLZ leading the charge on this. Okay. With, with Triple Mountain as well, Sooning in a bad position in the mid lane. Wave Clear comes through once again from DMO, and uh, they're still barreling up here, but Light Binding does connect, no follow through. But now Dominus have peeled them away from the Baron, but areas that they had heavily control warded. So they're going to lose so many wards that they've set up. They don't have wards themselves out for this one, so if they get cleared out, they need to go back to base and be able to recharge themselves. Scattered around this mid brush, they're going to eventually run on over. Uh, Chang Hong going first. Now, this is an aggressive move from DMO, but they still want that priority after clearing out the vision that they've spotted. Yeah, they got good control now. It's going to be on Sunning to try and force mid lane priority again. This is the type of games you see in North America. And you see these LTS games where it's like them sitting mid and trying to get some pivot. I think Sunning are going to get really uncomfortable with the situation. They're going to have to make a call on who starts Baron. They don't want Dominus to make that call with Triple uh, Mountain Dragon. Yubi has made his way back into the river while SMZ into the bottom side. Weird positioning here, but SMZ taking a buff away. He's going to be slow to the fight if, if they happens. If they start this, they will burn through it. You need to push them away from the pit. Or maybe take the fight. Oh, Hung what? Gets locked on down with the Light Binding Rage. You called it, but it's not going to be the play that makes it. While on the hunt was popped by Gala. They didn't think they had enough damage 
It's a four shell pung off it, and he has a lot of sustain with the Yumi, so this is a mind game that is actually favoring Dominus. Oh, are they gonna start it? Starting a They're doing it. If they get called out. They want the fight. They're gonna turn for it. It Remember. makes it so easy for Lux to be able to get her life finding. Let's and see if we can get it. SLZ is just chunking this as well, Ooh. so get ready, because DMO Bu -Bu. have not found Bu -Bu. Let's see if he can get it. He's coming in slowly. Level 15. Kennen has ulti. They get the Baron. Chungong spots him out. Bu -Bu. Got Don't him! Give the Maelstrom. It's over the edge as well. Gala walks out of the Kindred ult, and Kindred dies herself too. Now the Cat with the final chapter of the lockdown. Chungong has to carry the fight, but I think it's already over. Sooning again, just come up huge with a massive flank from the cannon. Perfectly executed. That's what you want to see in slow, burning, tense situations. Sooning just played it to the core perfectly. Head down mid, look for the game because I think those death timers are darn too long. Yeah, way too long, way too long. They got the members now, they've got this one. Well, Sooning, there was a question of this game because Dominus looked to be back in form. But suddenly, it comes down to one play, and Sooning closed the door before Dominus could walk on through. This was a tough call at the end, so let's talk about it, because we have a best of three. It ain't the end just yet. We get the hit and nail on the fact that you had triple Mountain Dragon. Triple. You had it. But you weren't willing to make the call to start on the objective because you didn't want any Baron Steel situations. You didn't want to use your Kindred Ultimate just for that. So there are so many points of concern for Kindred, they weren't willing to make that call, so they lost mid-priority. The traps were set up and made it harder for Dominus to even fight through. And then when they got past it, Bu Bu came in with that big flank. Yes, right. Hell yeah. Look at them, they have, they're feeling really happy about it, except for Weiwei. What the hell's <laughs> happening, Weiwei? It's Sunning Day. It is Sunning Day, it's Bu Bu Day as far as I'm Someone concerned. Someone throw the mascot in his direction. <laughs> I think Bu Bu though, uh, I'm, I'm straight to him at this point, Razer, because the cannon was what ended that game. Triple yes. kill to give him out, and a perfect execution where Chung Hong TPs in that one second earlier and just spots him out before it's too late. If we're having a discussion about who's going to be the MVP of this game, my mind does go to BB. Not just for that late game, like that end game play, but even for the top lane dive that came through, that he was able to nail down, execute incredibly well. Take a look at that goal graph. Two major moments in that game. A team fight victory that started out with Dominus, and a major team fight loss that ended up, and dead timers were too long to claw back. And now, for Zuni, you look at that game and say, well, look, there were elements you were in control for the majority of it, and then Dominus took it away until that final fight. And they were all fights that happened in that open ground in the Baron area, where I look towards what Dominus were able to provide there with both, of course, Chang Hong's ultimate, dividing the force, Pile able to come to him. Yeah, he had some great members. equalizers on Chang Hong. Exactly, like those members really came in clutch at the, uh, I think, 23 minute mark. And then you got to see the end game play, which in my mind is more about your positioning, right? You yep. see those games so often in North America where you're forced to be playing and pushing through mid lane. You just have to make a call. Uh, are you going to be starting up on Baron buff? Are you comfortable with losing control? Sooning were not, because not only did they recognize enemy team had double Mountain Dragon, but they also had no more control wards simply based on the fact that Dominus had cleared out. So if Dominus cleared out your control wards, and on top of that, they had, if they get repositioned again to get on top of that, they pick, they're starting it! And they got triple mount, yeah! and that's gone. Like it's, that. Boom! They had a full carry composition, they're going to be getting it. So, yeah. uh, Poor call, unfortunate situation for Dominus, that they're gonna go back and have that kind of regret loom over them. But Sooning win in position, they took that fight, and they really nailed down the execution of BB wrapping around uh, in Fog of War. And to come back to my previous point, when Sooning had control in the early portion of the game, those elements are still fed. SMLZ was still in a very good position for that fight. And in the mid lane as well, like Maple, I think he had a very stellar performance. Yeah, Maple played well. Maple played well at the end of the day. I think his ability in the last, in the, in the dragon fight, where he was able to keep Dominus in the fight. He didn't have to knock them out of the Kindred Ultimate. That didn't have to happen, right? He just needed to keep them it, in it. It looked good. So they couldn't, <laughs> yeah, it looked amazing. Yeah. Uh, just so they couldn't skitter off. So uh, I like the fact that we were able to see that team fight from both sides. Dominus, once again, are gonna feel heartbroken because 
you know that this looks like one of their better performances for sure regardless Apart they need to be happened. looking past performances mm. and they need to be able to come out with wins yeah it's one of those situations where you feel happy that you're able to you know gain leads so consistently but you're still coming out with losses this is situations that like teams like Vici have recognized yep uh, teams like BLG will be like yeah we were one hit on Nexus before we won the series versus in IG yeah. but we needed wins yeah so I understand we're in week four but the fact that this team is aiming for the playoffs, just to be in that situation like they were in last play, uh, they need to be able to take this series. This is the window they need to take, exactly right. And it comes back to the point of Sooning where they see this is the window, they're climbing through it. Yeah. Like, they're looking good this split. And it's not Hacker, it's not Xiao Al, it's Biu Biu and Weiwei. Yeah. And so everybody was questioning that. Yeah. I was questioning that. I put, I was him, low. I put him low that I did last split. Well, I mean, I, I was questioning the fact that, you know, you bring out two rookies for your squad when your team is known as like the super team with hacker who was the third best jungler last split uh last year that was yep in summer 2018 a lot of people were high on hacker and i'm, I'm just talking about from my perspective hacker was the guy you wanted to build the team around but then suddenly he gets challenged gets pushed off and Weiwei comes in strong too so uh the team was consistent with it even with the coaching staff change and they're starting to come out with big wins. It's going to be the key word. Consistency moving forward here for Sooning. See if game two is a rinse and repeat. If it can get cleaner for them or Dominus finally take that win that they so desperately need. A short break to find out the answer right after this.